Good morning. It's a pretty grey and dismal morning. There were some little shafts of sunlight coming through earlier. Um, it's a fair breeze, so I think the winds, uh, the weather's going to change. Um, we're almost at low tide. You can just see the ebb just coming out. And yesterday, oh, I was actually down here yesterday because I brought my mast back, and I can't fit the mast in the camper van. I have to use my car and use the roof rack. So I brought that down very quickly and went back and I witnessed the spring tide and it's one of the biggest spring tides we've had here. 10.2 meters apparently. And it was, you can see where it was. It was right up the bank and beyond. It nearly broke the bank over there. It was crazy. Um, so hopefully today we'll try and catch the, uh, we may get a ball wave, you know, for the tide. If we do, I'll try and capture it. Hopefully I won't have my head stuck under the uh, boat. Um, covers off. And wood's looking beautiful. Might give that one more little coat today before we go. There are little patches that are shiny, which means it's not gonna soak any more in. You can see there on those bits, but I think we can still give it a bit more. It's looking beautiful. I've got to, I've got to, I think I might try and polish this, you know, get the brass work sorted. But, you know, we can worry about that another time. So, um, without further ado, we need to crack on today. Got lots to do. Just emptying the bilge. Uh, you may be able to see, you're going to go upside down for a minute. Those are the little clips I did and they have stuck quite well but they're currently underwater, <laughs> which is never good for curing uh, epoxy. But I think we didn't have any rain for a fair few days. Uh, so it must, I'm pretty sure it would have cured. This has set really well, but I forgot that because there's now no drain hole in here, this just fills up with water. <laughs> so we need to drill a little drain hole in here. Um, that's really solid as well. So just be careful, there's some little spiky bits, but that's set really well. That little bit at the top has come off, unfortunately. You may just be able to see that. Um, there's a little bump in there. That'll need sorting. Just got to, we're just gonna have to hack that off and redo it. But other than that, we're looking quite good. You're ready to go. Okay, so fortunately, I, my camper van battery I have in my camper van, um, does, it doesn't fit this plug, but it fits it enough to work, operate this. So I've now been able to get this out halfway exactly. So we now know uh, how to fit this. So the first thing we're gonna do is just measure the distance this needs to be. Now, this literally needs to be there, but we're gonna have it as far forward as we can. I think about here. It's going to be about there, and the measurements say that from the little pin that sticks out to the wherever this is attached, where the tiller will be, um, it's going to be there, um, straight needs to be 595 five mil. So, the other thing we're just going to quickly do is measure that, which that's supposed to be about 18 inches. But a lot of people I read on, on, the, on the internet have actually moved that back a little bit. And this is about, let's just do that, just under 12 inches, 30 centimeters. So I'm happy with the position of that there. Now, that's the next thing we need to do, is take this little pin out. Whoa, oh, I, f I forgot to put the block back under the boat. We're gonna stick that right in the middle. I'm just gonna get a mark down. Let's just get a mark down. So we know roughly where we're going. There. We've got a little mark here. So we know that distance is, uh, should be 595 mil. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do, is at half distance. Let's measure that now. And that is actually bang on, 595, you can see there. We know it needs to be, so we know actually the hole needs to be there. Now, 
We've got a couple more things to consider though. The first thing is, now we know where that's gonna go, let's just move that out of the way a little bit. We know that the rudder stock's gonna be roughly about there. Oh, look at that. The pin, the pin, if we have this on the top, which is where we need it really, is gonna, is gonna be literally here. Now look, if we need to move this forward a little bit, we can do, we've got plenty of room there. I think I'd rather move this forward than put a block, I thought about putting a block on the side with the pin, but I'd rather have the pin just, well, let's have a look, it's gonna be about there. I don't know whether that goes that way or whether it goes that way, but I think what we do, we, we know we only need to move this tiller extension a little bit one way. So I think that's what we'll do. So we know the pin can go in the top and jobs are good. And so that, my friends, if we look here, that is the mark where we need this to be. So the only thing I would say is just mm -hmm. double check that is as far forward as possible. So it's actually gonna be here. There we go. That is our mark. And I think we're just gonna be brave and we're gonna drill a hole for that now. Here goes. <laughs> I hate drilling holes in the boat. I'm trying to fill them all up. And here's me drilling another one in. So here we go. Now this drill bit's a little bit smaller just to get a pilot hole. See how easy fiberglass is to drill out. There we go. Okay, now going back now, there is a little bit of fiberglass there already, and it's actually quite thick there. So when we get this in, hopefully we'll be able to. You might not even need any fiberglass, to be honest with you. See if we can get that to screw in like that. No, that's it. No, no, that's way too small. So we'll try the 11. I don't have an 11 and a half, I only have a 12. So I'm hoping this 11 will be okay. And the 11 and a half is about, is if you're drilling into wood, I think. <laughs> And I think we could probably wangle this in. Right, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna fit in quite nicely. So these come with their own sort of Allen key. So if it's too loose, then obviously it's not gonna work. If it's too tight, it could run the risk of cracking the fiberglass. Nice and softly. Once the first leading thread is through, we'll be okay. And you'll probably just feel it lighten up a little. That's gonna be pretty waterproof anyway. And then that is really in tightly. There we go, I don't wanna go anymore. And there, is the hole done. Now, those of you that wonder how this is actually gonna work, yeah, um, that is like flush to the deck, so you can sit on that and you won't feel it. But when we wanna use the tiller pilot, we screw this in, there we go, like this. And then the tiller pilot slots in its cup up there. And then, show you the remainder of it and obviously the tiller's here like this and we click that onto there now we've got a slight problem haven't we so I think this has answered my problem because of the angle of the deck by the time the heights got up there we've been moved back about a centimeter so we're gonna have to make a little wooden block here um, for the tiller so that's actually going to be there yeah okay so c'est la vie that's the way it is 
we're going to need to make a little little block for the tiller where the tiller pin is going to be inserted into so i'm going to make that i'm going to measure that off now then if you can see i'm right at the edge of the <laughs> of the uh uh, river here there's a swan over there young swan because it's sort of brownish it's just a lone swan over there on the river you may just be able to make it out on the right over on the other bank in the water i don't think it's every day you see a swan on the river mersey right let's have a look under here don't know if you can make this out but you, that's two coats of fiberglassing hope you saw that um Oh, it's a horrible job because you have to lie on your side and there's a there's a big lip here into the uh, lazarette and it's like oh god I give myself bruised ribs but um i've got some really good layers on there i layered up behind the cleat as well where the cleat used to be i put a little protective layer up behind the little uh, little pin there for the tiller pilot and then i put another little layer over this under this sorry just to make it good um and I think that is all the epoxy done. I don't think we're going to need any more over there. We'll have to, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay. Oh, it's decided to rain. Uh, that's a bummer because it's not supposed to be raining now. It's supposed to rain in the morning, a tickle, and it's supposed to clear up. So maybe the weather's just arriving a little bit late. I've got a bag over the the little centerboard cubby um, and then inside should be fine that should be fine we just don't want the boat to get too wet and water to go back so the next job was going to be to sort of maybe um well the next epoxying job would be to put the new blocks in for the battery box but i can't really do that at the moment because um those blocks are too wet so i can't epoxy over those wooden blocks yet until they're dried out so and yet as you can see oh boy the weather is now starting to come down it's not raining enough to stop just yet but i'm gonna have a little break and i'm gonna have some sandwiches today we're just gonna eat on the run so i've actually got some cheeky ham sandwich Ta -da. leftover ham from our pancake day so we're like cheese and ham pancakes oh whoa here we go <laughs> Let's just get this under cover. I think we're going to have to head for the camper van. Rain stopped. Lasted about 10 minutes that pour did. I filled my bilges up with blooming water. <laughs> Actually, water was coming out the out the scuppers. So it ended up in <coughs> ended up a bit of a pour. So I'm going to have my other sandwich and then we'll crack on. I think um, the next job actually will be to get this motor pad on so hopefully that will go quite well well it's still raining uh will be not quite as aggressively so we're going to crack on with this motor pad because at least i can be scurried under the under the boat or under the in the transom um, the motor pad's a little bit sticky still so i think it's had as much wax oil as it's gonna take and these bolts go in here now they are these the holes they go in don't feel like 10 <clears throat> 10 mil but i think that is going in slowly but surely two in <laughs> One to go, uh, two to go. I just got, oh, I just got this one in and I realized I forgot the washer. I want to do this properly. So, although now it's got a thread, it's going to go through quite nicely there, look. Little tap to get it all the way through. There we go. Four bolts in, ready to go. Let's take this over to the boat and get these seated in. 
Before we do that, we do need to give this a little clean. So actually having the rain has just helped a little bit. Get that clean, doesn't need to be too good. But while it's there, be a shame not to just get those, must be decades of muck off there. Right, so the, the, the path goes this way. Oh, that's interesting. So I've got the motor pad here and you'll see the bolts are way off vertically. And they're also, if I put that one in the bolt line, they're also way off horizontally. I mean, they're way off. This motor has also got a big gap in it. The bolts are completely in, nice and true. Yeah. And they are right there. So I don't know what's happened here. I mean, the whole order from Drescomot this time around was wrong. I, they had to send me th things three times and even still it was wrong. I ended up getting the, the lower bolts from, from another place, from Seashore actually. I just, it just didn't have time to be messing around. So I think that is the wrong motor pad. <sighs> that is a nightmare. I've, uh, I'm just fitting the last little feet, last pieces oop, for the uh, solar panel. Right, there you go. And then we're going to do soft side down. So that would be the bit that's left on the deck if we ever... You know, when we take the solar panel off, we don't want the scratchy, spiky bit of the Velcro, you know, scratching your knees or what have you. We'd rather have the little fluffy bit. There's one. Right, so let's, uh, let's take this over to the boat and see if we can get it to work. Rather amazingly, the sun's just come out. This is uh, classic Northwest UK weather. <laughs> Raining one minute, sunny next. Okay, let's stick that on. Now I'm gonna make sure that's the right way around. I think I want it this way, like that. And we'll have that. Like this, and I think that's probably bang on. There we go. That does need to cure. So we might well just leave that solar panel on. There we go. So we'll come back to that another time. But that's one solar panel fitted. So one of the problems with the lugger is that if you look carefully, this centerboard slot is lower than the than the scuppers so if the boat gets swamped and the water gets above here well this water's got nowhere to go and what will happen is the water will just start to gush through the centerboard slot and you won't be able to bail the boat out quick enough for the water coming in so we're gonna I've got a few ways I'm gonna try and stem the flow of of the water coming out. And one thing I thought, because this would be quite easy and cheap to do, is to actually get this rubber roofing material and actually stick it down like this, cut it to shape, and then I think the seat, when it's screwed down, will just bed that in. And then what we'll do, we'll just cut a little slit in this. So what will, if in effect, happen, we'll have like a closed slit, but when the board, but when this, uh, the centre board needs to kind of come through it, it should open it up as it needs to. I don't know, I don't know. It may work, it may not, but it does give, maybe, it probably gives something. So I'm just measuring it up. 
um, and then we need to make that pad nice and square so I've got this the right length and then what we're going to do is take this home and uh, make it so it'll fit here and here so I'm going to measure that and then we'll make this when we get back home. So rather than cut that here, I'm actually going to do just measure it because I think this is the same width all the way down. Yeah. So we only need this to be, let's call it 14 centimeters. And then when it comes over here, we need it to go another, let's say, 12 over there. 12 and then one two three so let's make a note of that the weather's turned a little bit now it's great so one thing I want to do is get this you know the hull a bit more polished and you can see it's I did it last season but it's oxidizing already now I've actually been practicing over here and you can see it's come up quite nicely there's still some quite deep <laughs> Oxi oxi uh, oxidation there which I think at the end of the day is only ever going to come out with with a sander but if I can get it at least shiny and polish her up she'll look she'll look really grand when she's back on the water so that's taken me about five minutes and I've got this heavier duty cutting compound from 3m which I'm using with my sponges so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with this try and get it as good as I can and then I'm gonna put the wax on and hopefully she'll stay quite shiny for a bit longer than before uh, am I gonna do the back I'm not gonna bother doing the back because you just can't see it there we go you might not be able to see but it's polished and ground down a little bit oh just need to do this little bit here Polish that bit. There. there we go. You can see how shiny it is when the sun comes out. Ah, oh, it looks a little bit better, doesn't it? This is like full swing spring tide. I think it was the spring yesterday, so we're nearly spring tide. But look at that. Good green. That's quick. That's really quick. There she is. She's looking shiny, isn't she? And I just wanted to get, um, I wanted to get the hull to at least the same state as the the gunnels, you know, because I've really done the gunnels now. This side, there's a little bit of uh, oxidation there that I just can't get rid of. This side, look at that. She's much nicer that side. Don't know why, but. I've also got rid of that old nasty sticker thing that was all over there. I've got a new Drescom sticker and a new dinghy sticker to put there as well, dinghy cruisers. So look, she's looking grand now, isn't she? Really? I always think how imposing this boat is. I'm looking at my little boat and it's a big thing. Anyway, we've had some big successes today. We've had some pretty big failures. It's all part and parcel of it. I'm sure we'll sort things out. Uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can get some time off work next week and come down, you know, a few days next week and uh, get the boat finished off now. So at that stage, or she's, she's at that stage where, um, you know, you think, oh, I'll just get the sails on the go. But it, just this final little push we could get a spick and span for the season and it'd be a boat to be proud of. So um, yeah, so today we're done. I'm going home. I'm having a cycle actually this afternoon on Zwift. So there we go. Um, and we shall say goodbye to the boat for today and catch you after the weekend.